the right sheets made by elements. If you ain't high now, then you feeling it by the second hit. Feel the wind breeze blowing, them trees blowing so much loud. Our eyes look like Vietnamese. Coughing so much, it brought a deuce to his knees. Say the pledge of allegiance to the big man. Welcome to the man cave, everybody. Been waiting to get to this show all week. Riding in the co-pilot seat, of course. Got my man Shug with me this <laughs> evening. <laughs> what Yo, it do, up, brother? Man? How y'all doing, chilling. man? Nothing I'm chilling. Life, man. You know what? Week two of Ramadan is already here. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. How you doing on your journey? So far, so good, man. Alhamdulillah, man. You know, actually, I didn't eat this morning, so I'm waiting for a little bit later so I can drink this water and break my fast, man. You know? oh, okay. So oh, man. Still going. I lost some weight along the way, too, man. I'm trying to get rid of this gut so I can look like you, man. You know what I'm saying? I get that summertime body, man. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you crazy man hey look you excited for the show today i know I, I, am. I am i am man you know i got a lot of questions right now coming coming this way so hopefully you guys can stay tuned and relax you know what yeah I'm saying? that's and what's get up ready to talk about what we're gonna talk about yeah definitely definitely i i kind of feel like we dropped the ball a little bit because there's nothing lit in the room <laughs> <laughs> I'm not smoking myself, you know what I'm saying, but you can go ahead and... There's nothing <laughs> lit right now. Yeah. I, I, I feel it, but it's okay. It's yeah, okay. yeah, next because time. Next it's time. not all about that. It's not all about that. <laughs> well, well, look, without further ado, yes. I want to bring this mm -hmm. special lady into yes. the show right now. We met her by happenstance, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, but, you know, I'm glad that we are open enough to, you know, speak and meet people of all types. And, you know what I'm saying? It was really a blessing of running into her. Miss Billy Ball, ladies and gentlemen, how hey. you doing? Hey, how are y'all doing? Having yes. Me. Welcome to the show. It was God. I do believe that probably salt together. <laughs> yes, it was. Because, yes, man, it was. He's so good. Now, go ahead and tell us who you're here representing and what you represent real quick. Go ahead. Okay. I am here representing the DFW Academy of Cannabis Science. Yes, sir. <laughs> Great pot of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, well, first of all, before I, I jump into that, I wanted to ask you, where are you from? Oh, uh, I was a... Uh, I was born in Dallas, raised in Kaufman, Texas. Oh, wow. So yeah. you're right here, huh? Yeah. And I graduated okay. high school in 1990 and moved to Arlington so I could watch Nolan Ryan pitch in the old ballpark. And I've stayed here, raised mm -hmm. my daughter here, uh, have been here ever since. Okay. Nice. Okay. So that's cool. So you are uh, actually being one of the owners of this, this fine establishment mm -hmm. here, you know, I, I want to talk a little bit about how you came to, you know, come into doing this business. But first, I want to talk a little bit about your your background okay. as well. Like, I know you, uh, you, where where did you used to work before this? Uh, before this, I worked for the Texas Rangers. Oh yeah, baseball club. Yeah, I was What's the director of the tour department for. Um, I worked there for nine and a half years. Mm -hmm. I got it after uh, my amputation and I needed a job. I was sick of watching ESPN and everything. So got a job as a tour guide and then just kind of worked my way up to tour now, manager. I mean, we can't roll past that. <laughs> you, you just said after your amputation. Right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, so how, how did, and, and, you know, of course we're going to get in your business as a oh, podcast. All so of you. yeah, all of it. <laughs> so how, how did this happen? Well, uh, I can tell you the exact date. It was June 4th, 2008. I had taken my daughter to school. She was about to be out on summer vacation. And so she was going to her grandparents. I'm kind of a loner mm. and I was cleaning my apartment. And later on that day, I pulled something out of the bottom of my middle toe. So you're grown at this point. Oh, you're, yeah, yeah you're, this was 11 years ago. What, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. go ahead. And so uh, come to find out uh, it was a brown recluse and when they bite you, they inject you with an anesthetic. So you don't know that you've been, you know, not on. And so when I pulled the thing out, who the fuck gets bit by a spider like that? So uh. I was like, I thought a bee or something had gotten me. And so it immediately kind of starts liquefying you and so I uh, didn't know what it was. I was cleaning it, trying to take care of it. I'd just been fired from a job I really loved because I went to sleep with my married Venezuelan boss. Wow. And so I was just in Toxic her, yeah. masculinity, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, Go what ahead. a dick. Oh, my God. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like struggling with that and trying to find a new job. And unbeknownst to me, the inside of my foot's like liquefying. And so. Oh, my God. Uh, I finally kind of figured out what it was and uh, you know, getting my car worked on and just had a lot going on and 
you know, the internet wasn't what it is today. Yeah. <laughs> so when I finally figured it out, I was like, maybe I need to go see a doctor. And I kind of just fell into a coma in my apartment. Oh my God. And I was found, I think they said like a week later. I know I got bit June 4th and my hospital bracelet said I was admitted June 23rd. Holy shit. And I was like, you know, in the hospital and they were telling my mom, just get her a pot and a coffin. She's gone for And my mother's from Louisiana, so she wasn't having that shit. She's like, you go in there, you fix my daughter. You don't know what God has planned for her. So, you know, shut the fuck up and go make her better. My mother got escorted out of the ICU oh my God. several times while I was in the hospital. Wow. And while I was in my coma, I had all these fabulous adventures, I guess you could say. And, <laughs> you know, when you when you talk about it, sometimes you're, people are like, man, that's, that's crazy shit right there. But, like you know, some DMT shit. Yeah, well, a lot of the stuff that happened in my coma dreams has happened since I came out of my coma. Wow. That's deep. You Make know, a general reality. It, it was like the house my husband had built for us. The, the kitchen is the spitting image of where I sat and had coffee with someone trying to find my journey. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I had this weird experience where I was being driven around looking for a jazz fest and they dropped me off at the new Cowboy Stadium. It was being built while I was in my coma and uh, I dreamt that um, I was allowed to kick a field goal, but when I did, my right shoe came off, which is the foot that's amputated. It was the Super Bowl and it was freezing and there, there was like icicles hanging around and then wow. they had the Super Bowl and it was freezing and just little things like that. But at the finally, I was, I remember I was, uh, in like a doctor's chair and I was being experimented on being told I was worthless and useless and no one wow. wanted me and when they got done with me they were gonna shove me in this garbage chute over here and like my mama said it was like I was fighting the devil that's why they had to strap me down while I was in my coma and uh, I remember I was fighting and there and this guy came to me and he goes you know we're gonna let you go and they put a baby in my arms and so at that point I started realizing I looked down and I was in this beautiful gown I was in this beautiful like room that was round but didn't have any walls it was dark but you could see and you started noticing people just just going just lucid ascending. dreaming yeah, yeah like there was children ascending i was going all sorts of different people and you know the closer you get to this great light the less you feel bad about the people that you're leaving and what's going on mm -hmm. And when I got close enough, I could hear my family calling me. So I was pulled back down through this tunnel thing. And when I looked outside, it was like looking through two glass doors. And out there was reality. There was trash. There was a bus. I could see like smoke coming out of the end of it. And I was like, I don't want to go back out there. Awesome. So yeah. I started, no, so I started to ascend again. And as soon as I got close, I hear, you know, you have the choice to go and stay. And, you know, I saw my daughter. I saw my mom. I saw, you know, things. And, uh. I yeah, was like, okay. Sometimes you can just put things into like fruition. Like sometimes yeah. you have that kind of like spiritualized state. Yes. You know what I mean? And sometimes, it's crazy. Things, yeah, it just kind of things can just push into fruition because it's kind of like ESP. I think ESP, is that the right word? Yeah, 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 something like that. It is. It's so, just, you know. Go ahead. Well, I got sucked back, you know, came back down and I decided to go out <laughs> into reality. And when I got out there, I love funk music. So Aretha Franklin and James Brown are standing oh, at the bus killing me, yeah. telling me to get on the bus. <laughs> and so when I get on the bus, like I see family and friends and they're like, are you ready to come back with us? And I was like, yeah. And I looked up in the roof of the bus. It was like different colored lights, but it started swirling and it turned into this very white, hot vision of myself. Okay, no. And I was pulled into it and then I was, came out of my coma, I'm being shoved in an MRI tube, feeding tubes, breathing tubes, tubes everywhere. I'm shoved, you know, strapped down to a bed and I was like, uh oh. And that's from a spider I bite. fucked up. I want to go back. I want to go back. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, from a spider bite. Okay, well, and first of all, I'm sorry that that happened yeah. to you. That's I'm crazy. Not but yeah, I know it probably changed yeah. you for the better. It probably put yeah. you on a different path. I, uh, let me ask you a question because I'm really interested in it certain stuff like yeah. that I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to certain you things are so nerd. i am <laughs> what i want to know is uh uh like how was that rehabilitation process and like did you have to actually like learn how to rewalk and oh yeah like it was again? it was rough i came out of the coma and for a week i was still tubed and intubated and they were feeding me this brown goo in a tube and i was uh, communicating with my mom she wrote down the alphabet and she would just go through it and I would nod and that's how we would communicate and uh, 
Um, the doctor, the one who kept telling me and her that I was going to die, I remember one point he, after I came out, he had my face tinted because they were going to put a new prick line in my neck. And this asshole dropped the needle into my cheek oh, yeah. and told the intern, it's okay, she doesn't feel it. And I'm like, straight down, I'm like, motherfucker, when I get out of this, what I'm going to do to you, I'm going to take this other foot. Your spirit, your spirit is absolutely amazing to have gone through all of that and you came out on the other side. That's just a beautiful thing. First of all, just your spirit in general, yes, I mean, you know what I'm saying, the way you were. Definitely. So. Coming out of that, you you uh, land you a nice little job with the Rangers. Go right. ahead and show that ring, man, oh. at that camera right there in front of you. Yeah, there. that's what it is ALCS. right there. And that's the ALCS. ALCS ring right there from there. And I got the 2010 yep, one as well, but I'm on. getting the bling bling on. Right. 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 Okay, <laughs> that's what's up. So you land your job there. You love, you serious about the Rangers, huh? I love the Texas Rangers. When I was in the recovery home, which was god awful, it's called Metroplex Recovery Home in Grand Prairie. If you know anyone in there, go get them out right now. Whoa. Um, but it was it was awful. I'm surprised I didn't die while I was in there. But um, all I wanted to do is go to a baseball game because when my daughter was little, we would go to baseball games a lot. I would pull her out of school because mm -hmm. you know it was, it's it's goodness. And uh, I just I love baseball. I don't right. I don't know what the attraction is. Well, I when I was younger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Hey, it's all good. And, Okay, so we we have already established that me and you are going to a Rangers game. Correct? Yes, yes, we Box can seats. all go. Yep. Uh huh. Box seats. Well, I like to sit like really close to the dugout and behind. Okay, the I like that. Those are good. I like to sit there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, my last tickets were uh, there, right behind the dugout. That yeah. was really cool. Was yeah. Actually, cool. I'm not a big baseball fan myself. You know, I know a little bit about it. I'm a Nationals or your fan myself, but That's okay. you know, whatever, 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 <laughs> whatever. Okay, so you land your job with the uh, Texas the, Rangers, uh, Rangers yeah. and you were there for what? Nine years, three months. When okay. I went in for my interview, I was on two crutches. I had wow. on these god awful big ugly tennis shoes because my other foot was still kind of swollen. Right. And uh, you know, I got the job. And my first month, I was on two crutches touring that mm. ballpark. Then I went to one crutch, then a cane, and then uh, you go ba boom! Right. I became the tour manager. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. And now, so going from that to what you're doing now yeah. which you are actually running yes. running the academy yes. yes let's talk about it yes yeah, yeah. let's go, go ahead share i'll let you go ahead and bring that in so man. What, what exactly do you guys do at the academy because the name of your uh academy is called what the dfw academy of cannabis science cannabis science uh -huh. and what are they doing with the the cannabis for the industry and yes, what's going yes, on yes. well you know, I quit my job to go to the academy because right. it was just time for me to leave the Rangers. And uh, I had to take a day off from work and I was walking by the TV and I saw a news report on this. And it was literally like stopping my tracks and look and rewind because I was like, what the hell is this? This mm. it's on the news, so it has to be legit kind of right. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, uh, I'm sorry, let, let me uh, <laughs> throw one thing in there real quick because I want to make sure I get this this information out early uh, to any viewers that may be there watching. Um, even though you you do work at the Dallas Fort Worth where you're a partner owner of the Dallas Fort Worth Academy of Cannabis Science, mm -hmm. uh, what you guys specialize in uh, is basically all aspects of the cannabis industry in general. Uh, you also offer internships, job placements, um, entrepreneur workshops and industry networking those are some of the things you yes. guys you guys actually tell us a little bit about that I, I just want to especially that job placement like what kind of jobs are there available and, right because you know, you know you know just to clarify cannabis is hemp and the devil's lettuce marijuana mm -hmm. um, and so THC is what is illegal oh. and the hemp and the CBD is what's becoming a little bit more accepted uh, so what we do is we, you know, the plant is beautiful. It's a beautiful plant. It is. It's, it's medicine. Yeah, it's medicine. Definitely, it's, definitely. you know, it was put here before any of us got here. So obviously it has a purpose. Um, so in class, we get into the plant, break it down. Uh, we have scientists that come in and talk about the different components in it. Doctors that come in and talk about your endocannabinoid system, right. your CB1, your CB2 receptors, how the medicine can help affect all these wonderful ailments, injuries, treatments. Um, we have lawyers that come in and talk about um, RICO laws, talk mm. about different 
you know, because in the state of Texas, everything is changing day by day right it now. It is. It's, it's slow change, but it's changing. It's slow yeah. change, but what was, you know, valid Friday may not be valid today because mm -hmm. they changed a word in the legislation or, you know, they're not sure if the bill is going to be able to be voted on because Dan Patrick has that ability. One person, yeah. one man has the ability to say, I could give a rat's ass what all you Texans think. This is what I think. And if you look into his background, his number one contributor to his campaigns is Big Pharma. Mm. So with with you doing what you do, let me ask you this. And with you being an uh, amputee mm -hmm. and also working with CBD and things like that, do you use anything to help you? Daily. Daily. Okay. Daily. So. I, what do you have, like phantom limb pain? I do have type? phantom limb pain. You know, okay. like when you get a Charlie horse in your calf, what are right. you supposed to do? Wiggle your foot. I ain't got a foot to wiggle. So <laughs> right. It's kind of rough sometimes. So I noticed, like, after I got out of the hospital, uh, my endocannabinoid system wasn't on point because I'd been in the hospital for so long. But mm. the doctors couldn't figure out why I survived. They said I should have died. And after getting out and doing research, I. I realized it was because my endocannabinoid I'm about system. to lick up this damn spider. I know that I was much, on man. point. You got me shook in I this know. It's crazy. <laughs> and so after getting out of the hospital, like, you know, I was you know, just the good girl. You know, this is going to be my chance to just, I'm you know, not going to do anything anymore. And uh, I started having really bad panic attacks, anxiety attacks. And I'd mm. never had one before. And they were, they were awful. And so went to the doctor, got my little prescription of pills or you know i don't even remember what it was mm -hmm. um but i remember that i would freak out when i got down to my last three because i was like how am i going to function without yeah. these pills right. how right. am i going to function and then um you know i started getting my endocannabinoid system back on track don't need the pills anymore so what helps you the most um it's a combination of cbd and thc mm. oh, you know okay. because i take cbd tincture every day you know uh, underneath the tongue sublingually and it's hard when people don't take it to tell you what it does. It just, it just balances you out. It makes you healthy from the inside out. It connects to all the receptors that it needs to. You know, it can help with seizures. It can help with Parkinson's. It can wow. help with epilepsy. Wow. Um, it can help with pretty much everything up underneath the sun. There's so many different cannabinoids, not just THC and CBD, but CBN that can help with digestive issues. There's CBGs. You just keep breaking that beautiful plant down more and more and more and find it has more and more medicine in it. Yeah, they are. Just, yeah. yeah. And they, that's pretty much what your academy is doing. They, they look into all those different. So do you yes. guys like look for patients who might be suffering from certain symptoms to come out and. Yeah, well, you know, like the, the, the students in our classes so far um, have run the gamut of, you know, 65 year old woman who had metastatic breast cancer and it spread everywhere. And while she's on chemotherapy, the only thing that would help her was cannabis mm. and now she's just she's recovered and she's just precious and she's living <laughs> down in louisiana another woman came to us and her daughter had kidney failure and right. when i was in the hospital i had kidney failure too they shut down and told my mom i was going to need a transplant wow. but i came back but this woman her daughter kidney failure wasn't couldn't be on a transplant list because she had cannabis in her system right mm. this woman's brother was also a cannabis user, unfortunately died in a tragic car accident. That's terrible. They transferred, transplanted his kidney into the daughter, started producing urine in a week. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. What's up, Big Joe? What's going on, Joe? Is it How you doing, man? What's happening, man? You good, bro? Yeah, man. I had to get. I had to. This is our uh, our local CBD expert right here. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm well. Man, I'm kind of sad you're going to miss me on Saturday, bro. Yeah, I am too, man. But that's cool, though. What, yeah, so, where's she graduating from? Uh, Stephen F. Austin. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, actually, oh. let's, let's, it's a lot of people that's graduating right now. This is like the week of graduations. That's uh, why I wanted to put it let's on. Let's get some shout outs right now. I know a couple people at UTA, I think they had a graduation coming up. So I think, uh, we have people that's uh, with Stephen F. Austin and Sam yeah. Houston. All these graduations, they're coming into the real world right now. Yeah. So get ready for the responsibilities because it's coming. Yeah. There's yes, a reason yeah. why they call it a commencement ceremony. Yeah. So 
commencing the rest of your life now. Yes, so, that's right. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's that's great, man. I'm yeah. proud of you. Yeah, I'm proud of her. I'm man. Proud of her. Yeah, for you know sure, what man. Saying? Big up to education, man. Yeah. That. If you yeah. was if you was gonna miss the show for anything, I wanted to be that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man. It's a great reason. Good job, Karate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good job. <laughs> well, well, we got Miss Ball in here today. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm coming in kind of late right yeah, now. Yeah, she, she, so she a little upset. A yeah, she a little upset at you because you ain't bringing no fish today. Oh. This time. And I almost wore my Saints gear too. Oh, yeah, you got to rep all the time. Man. Right, okay. Well, hey, so we sitting here, man, and we talking about the, uh, basically the pros and cons of, uh, you know, cannabis and CBD and right. effects and, you know, medicinal. You got any questions you want to ask, Ms. Block? Did you guys touch on the, the lady was at Disney World? Did y'all talk about that? Oh, crazy. What Grandma? happened at Disney World? Let's yeah. talk about it. Well, so did they search her or something with the, she had it in her purse, like her tincture or whatever in her purse. Yeah, Grandma had some CBD tincture Grandma in her purse to help her. her arthritis so she can walk around that overpriced place and pay you know 80 bucks for a fucking hot dog <laughs> offer them right. to put her in jail because she had cbd in her purse are you serious yeah. what's been in florida arrested her can't we it was nuts. Jail. it was nuts yeah. well there's this uh kid that we've been talking to the mom in oregon where cannabis is legal mm. okay yeah this little girl she put out a plea um she's 11 had terminal brain cancer Chemotherapy wasn't working. It was just making her worse. So the mom was going to take her out of the hospital and try other stuff. So she started giving her cannabis. It shrunk the tumor down to 10%. Months and months of chemotherapy did nothing. Cannabis within three months down to 10%. The doctor found out and got pissed off and has called CPS. Is wow. trying to get her parental uh, medicinal rights taken away yeah, because this doctor, guess what, gets kickbacks, kickbacks. when so, this kid does chemotherapy. Crazy. This woman's also on the board of a wish with wings, who then rescinded the little girl's wish because she wasn't terminal anymore. Wow, ridiculous! People's bias and own dumbass opinions get in the way of. But your your actual school is showing people how to do it the right way correct. legally and be board certified correct and things correct. like that right because you know with the hemp bill that passed um hemp i was going to ask you is this texas yeah. we talking about like yes because yeah, you know it was passed just because something is passed federally right the yeah. states still mm -hmm. have their own little right. so right now what texas is trying to do because it's passed sid miller the ag commissioner is like yes i'm on board we can grow more good hemp mm -hmm. right now than we know what to do with but Texas has, All to this figure land. Out, has to figure out how to get their money. money you yeah. Know? It and always goes back to the money. Yes. Yeah. And wow. how to appease um, the big farmer who are about to start losing money because of this wonderful miracle. The, the fuel companies who are about to get, you know, jacked because it can make fuel. The, the textile mm -hmm. companies, all of it. Because, you know, the prohibition really goes back to the 30s with mm -hmm. um, Ainslinger and FDR and, uh, you know, the DuPont family and the Hearst family. We've heard of those people. Right. Paper and oil. Yeah, right, um, right. So, you know. Yeah, basically, I mean, I, I think it was the, they declassified, they classified marijuana as a class one drug. A schedule one, a yes. schedule one because it was easier to break down. It was easier to turn into cardboard and paper and the lumber companies got afraid of that yeah. and mm -hmm. said, that mm -hmm. we getting that shit outlawed to not be used in any yeah. anything so you can't use it for clothes paper cardboard you think about what it takes to chop a whole tree up, a whole tree the limbs and everything and what it would take to just shred up the fibers of marijuana and make a, a piece of cardboard. not only that but the land value that it takes to grow the tree versus how much the land value it takes to uh to grow a plant yeah that you see too. what i'm saying so that too it's crazy and then not only that but um in terms of from what i've seen before in my past life uh you know marijuana you can grow a bunch in a small area oh yeah you know especially I mean? hemp like an acre of trees it mm. takes about eight years to grow then you chop it down, you take away all that oxygen, right. you take away all that stuff mm -hmm. that takes away all the bad stuff. Whereas hemp, you can grow an acre of hemp in about three months. Yeah. And uh, when you start planting hemp, it cleans up the soil. Uh, they planted it in at Chernobyl. Remember that big, yeah. mm -hmm. they planted it there the and it yep, yeah. started to uh, clean up the soil. What? Yeah. And so, wow. and that's you mean the radiation spot? Yeah, the radiation. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. It started to clean all that up. That's so, what's up. That's what's up. I, I, seriously, what jobs are available? 
<laughs> that's uh. what's but you know what, honestly, I, I got to get back to it. Like I, I, I'm curious about the job placement. I want to know what kind of internships are available for this industry at this moment. At you this know what moment, I'm like in this state, where people are are at, you know, because a lot of people are interested in your school not only for the information, but they want to know how to get into the business. Exactly. One one thing that that kind of pisses me off about. Uh, the whole legalization of marijuana and the way it's getting legalized nowadays is because, you know, I grew up in the, you know, coming up in the 80s, the 80s. and the 90s. I seen a lot of my brothers, people I love, go down for slinging the same shit. That's that, about to be legal. But that now we got people walking around trying to sell in vials and bottles, you know what I'm saying? Right. And some of the best to ever do it. Yeah. Some of the best to ever handle a brick or something. Huh. Yeah, but see, like, <laughs> I, I got mixed emotions about it, too, because I kind of feel like if it's going to be that case, like, even if it is, it gets to the point where it will be legalized, then we have to kind of go and look at some of those laws that yeah. were previously written. What about the we, people that's in jail still? Not only that, but their records have yeah. to be cleared. You know well, I mean? some that's states are actually trying to expunge. Yeah. You know, the, the legalized states are actually trying to expunge these records and clean these records and get these people out of jail because it's, right. it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, most definitely. It's uh, ridiculous. Um, but as far as like, you know, the industry right now, uh, you know, Oklahoma is so close to us and good Lord, they are so far ahead of us <laughs> in this. And, well, so what are the differences in their laws than uh, our laws here? Well, you know, Oklahoma's got it going on with the, you know, right here in Texas, there are three medicinal marijuana dispensaries. Do you know what you have to do to get a card? You have to have retractable epilepsy, which means... You have seizures so bad and you mm. shake so bad and that you've tried all the other doctor recommended treatments. There's mm. tons of them out there. So make sure you try all of them. And then you have to go to one of the only 40 to 50 doctors in the whole state of Texas who's allowed to prescribe medicinal marijuana. Then you have to go to one of the other doctors who's allowed to prescribe it. You have to have two prescriptions. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And then you go. The cap is And in California, I can just go to the store and buy something. Correct. Yeah, Nevada, you can go to store. Just log on your phone. Yeah. Nevada, Colorado. Yeah. They got Uber. <laughs> Uber <laughs> weed. Boston, Free roll. <laughs> all a but lot you, you would think you would think with the money that the marijuana industry is bringing in in Colorado and California, even Washington D.C. now, which is uh, damn near legal. Um, that Texas would be next to, I mean, with all the actual agriculture and land that no, we man, have here, that we will be next. How far do you think we are from actually Texas becoming one of the states that are legal? That's fully recreational legal. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully, I don't, obviously it's not going to be this session. You know, mm -hmm. our government only has to work every two years when it gets a job right. from like January to May, odd years. Um, so that's what they're doing right now is uh, getting these bills in. Uh, working them to death there there was one uh, word that was put into a bill that makes hemp cigarettes illegal in the state of Texas now because you combust them oh, yeah, she gave me, you it, gave me one of those at the uh, spot at the party yeah, yeah. they're they're wonderful it's just hemp you know see, it, hemp in them no tobacco no nicotine it's about to hit illegal. it's about to hit nine o'clock so at nine o'clock I have a, a game for you all right Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, what's nine. The name, what's the name of this game? This is the man cave. <laughs> game. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you play too much. <laughs> so I got, I got you. Uh, I got your questions written here, right? I'm ready. Hold on. Right, you trying to get the answers on the question? Joe, you gonna answer them? I mean, I got the answers. So Joe, you read them. We are gonna give her a minute. One to answer all nine, Dang. and we're going to see how smart her <laughs> knowledge is on everything on there. Now, let me study for this. You know, like, <laughs> all right, go uh, ahead and study know, a minute. Go uh, ahead, A, a wise man once told me, like, well, I once heard from a person who thought he was wise, who heard from a wise man before. He said that um, man who stands on toilet is high on pot. <laughs> <laughs> You're a 
fool. <laughs> Something wrong with you, boy. I swear. It's true. So, let me, so Confucius, actually Confucius. What about it. advocacy for people that are locked up right now and going through this? Do you think that you know your school would want to have their stamp on some stuff like that to help out people who have been going through that? Oh you gosh, know? it has to be. Yeah. I mean, we have to be the forefront of education because that's what's important. You know. You have to know how to approach people, but education is so important because there's a stigma in this false <laughs> narrative going around about this plant. And, you know, especially when you have, a, you know, deputies down in Austin saying, you know, it causes the, the suicide. And you're like, yeah. you know, I have a doctor. I need for you to. But in terms of like, because I, I kind of have my stipulations in regarding uh, marijuana as well, because. Um, I, I believe that should be not just marijuana. We can talk about cannabis. You know what I mean? I believe that should be, still should be a, like a legal age that that. Oh, be, definitely. You know what I mean? Like, yes. Yeah, because uh, yeah. it, it, I don't want it to see to a point where you know what I'm saying it just kind of gets to. I think that's probably what legislation is probably afraid of. Like it just kind of gets out of hand and. And are they, yeah. Like, are, uh, what cons are, is it in in that though? Yeah. Like in in marijuana in general and CBD in general. Like what. What stuff do we need to steer clear from? Like, mm -hmm. what are the cons Correct. of it? You know, because not only is it a, it, you know, I mean, look, I smoke, slam. I'm just saying, I cheat. So, yeah, <laughs> it's it's a great situation but i mean all of it isn't good correct you know, there's definitely Cor oh, correct. things about it that isn't you know what would you say your cons are about it well you know there's going to be tons of people who would try to sell you absolute shit you right. know that's going to yeah, say that was oh, be my question yeah. how do you determine value good cbd from the bootleg exactly stuff? Just we, were just talking about yeah, we were talking about yeah. you don't want to buy it at the gas station yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't buy edibles or cbd but you know you have to if you go into a shop or you are online looking at a cbd product and you ask them for their lab reports they better immediately pull one out if they're mm. really good they're going to have three lab reports that show you exactly the content what's in it the, the ingredients are important too because we deal with lots of different companies checking their products and when you flip it over and you've got an edible and the first ingredient is sugar and the second ingredient is corn syrup and the third yeah. ingredient is water and then gelatin and then dye that's what and it then is. you're like that's bullshit you know yeah. these are supposed to be medicine yeah. in essence mm -hmm. and you know cannabis in and of itself has never ever killed anyone no one has ever yeah. OD'd from it. No one has ever died from consuming it. Not talking about the violence that could be associated with, or people lacing yeah. things with wrong things. Mm -hmm. And that's something you have to, you would have to watch out too, but it's kind of like alcohol and you know, you're thing full of pills. Right. You have to watch out for, for the kids and make sure. Yeah, and I, and I noticed on the there. news, they, they try to put a spin on it, right? Especially here. So they were talking about the amount of people going to the emergency room because of cannabis or basically the edibles, right? Exactly. Uh, so they try to create exactly. this narrative to where exactly. it's dangerous or it's bad. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, they said, <laughs> yes. they said smuggling in LA, LAX went up 166% <laughs> 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 since the legalization. I'm sure it did. I'm dead serious though. You know, people try to get it out to these states that don't got it. I mean, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know, you ready now, Joe? Yeah, man, I think I'll study All right, right you're you going to get a minute 30 to answer these questions. Well, you gonna put on the stopwatch. Put her right yeah, on the spot. Yeah, man. she on the stopwatch. You okay. get a minute 30 to answer them all, okay? You get all of them right, you get to take me to the Rangers game. <laughs> oh, wow. If you get one of them wrong, you get to take me to the Rangers game. <laughs> all right, so Ready, the, first, go. the first question, uh, job testing for marijuana, for or against? Against. Against, okay. Uh, what department regulates the use of CBD? Nobody, really. Okay. Uh, CBD is the main component of what? CBD is the main component of... It's a cannabinoid. There you go. Uh, name three natural benefits of CBD. Oh, man. Relaxation, focus, you sleep good. Uh, That's good. <laughs> uh, what's the best way to ingest CBD? Hmm. I would say sublingually. Okay. Uh, up underneath the tongue, and then you know, follow it with a, a gummy. There you go. Uh, when seconds. was the Rangers' last World Series win? Never. Oh! 
I thought I was going to get you in that one. Good job, Billy. Good job. Hey, I got one. I think I got one hanging over here. Okay, so Billy, all right, now we're back to the show, man. Wait a minute, so I'm intrigued by this okay. last question that you have on this page. Yes, sir. So, what exactly, in your words, is a former beer wench? <laughs> <laughs> yes! <What>? Yes! <laughs> Yeah, she is a former beer wench. Yes. Okay. Uh, what? So, yeah, so tell her explain. explain huh? Well, I uh, used to work at golf courses, and I was uh, the lady who drove around in the, the car. car. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, All right. you know, and if I liked you, I was really nice to you. But if I didn't, if you were a dick, I would, if I knew I was coming up on you and I knew what you drank, I'd shake it up before I got it to you because I could just <laughs> stick my hand in and be like, so here, here you go. So here's or, the backstory, Joe. On her Facebook page, because of course, you know, I do my studying on who's going to come on the show. Mm -hmm. So on her Facebook page, she has, you know, everything she does, and it says, former beer wench. <laughs> gotcha. At whatever. Water golf chase golf? That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. I forgot all about that question that it was there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't want to say what golf club, but she said it. So. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I, I'm, I'm really curious about the licensing process. I know you don't want to give us all the information. Boring. Because we're on the podcast and you want people to come to school, check the website out and stuff. But what is it? Like, how can I get my licenses so I can be involved? Because I, I just really believe that people of brown color, especially, we deserve a piece of this Definitely. freaking yes. industry. And it's not right to charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for us to get in. So if we got yeah, to yeah. come to Billy to teach us how to get in the damn game. That's right. That's right. Hook well, us up, Billy. You know, we are working with uh, several hemp farmers. One has uh, you know about 1.1 million acres. Mm. Another is a former NFL player from lives in Hemp Hill, Texas. Thank you. And uh, thank you. And so we are trying to get them started with their their hemp farming. Of course, right. nothing can really start happening till between May and September. But right now is the time to do it. If you wait till the government to figure right. out their shit is exactly. never going to happen. So hemp is legal. So now what you do is you know people call and they're like, we have so much business. We are doing this hemp farm. We are doing this. We need people to help us. Well, guess what? That's what we do. We train people right. to, you know, know what they're doing, what they're talking about, to be able to intelligently talk to someone about this. And, you know, there was a normal march this weekend and there was, you know, the, the protesters who are. Is that know, the one that was in Fort Worth? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it was a great, too. great rally. I mean. Awesome, but you always have those turds who just want to come float around in the punch bowl and just Yeehaw. just be turds about the situation. And you know they don't want to listen to facts. They don't want to listen that you know if you're coming at me with that you know I'm smoking the devil's lettuce and God is going to strike me down because of it. Well, then look at Genesis one twenty nine. Right. Do that and then come back to me and then let's chit chat about this because you know it was here before we were all here. And it's you know it's gonna be here. Is that what they call it? The devil's, the devil's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never heard of it. The devil's kind of lettuce. And you know, know. marijuana is not even a real term. The government, back when the prohibition stuff was going on, came up with it to make it sound more Mexicans because they used yeah, that's the true. Mexicans mm -hmm. and that's jazz true. musicians because. When white oh, women smoked right. the marijuana, we couldn't figure out who we wanted to have sexual relationships with. So right. obviously, if we were attracted to, you know, one of you handsome fellas, it had to be the marijuana and not just our own good taste, correct? Yeah. So that's what <laughs> that's what they used. You know, they used that silly <laughs> propaganda. So, okay. So uh, I want to ask you about your your school in terms of the financial part do you guys offer a financial aid or is it something where you offer payment plans and oh, things we do like payment that plans. Um, right now you know the, the class is 420 and awesome. the books are 80. So how ironic uh, 420. Know, right so the class is 500 <laughs> but we're running like a 10 percent off special right now 450 we do payment plans we want to help people get into this industry we also do remote classes where you know, we have some people who drive up from San Antonio and Austin, uh, and we're like, yeah. hey, come chill at our house the so night So is that before. what was going on at the clubhouse when we when we met you guys? You guys were doing a remote thing well, yeah, there Yeah, well, we were doing, like, the, the, there were students there who actually attend class, but then we have it, like, set up where uh, you can sit at home in your undies, eating a bowl, smoking a bowl, and participate in class wow. like you're right there. 
And then, um, you know, come join us if you can. We have, like, little graduation ceremonies. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. That's pretty awesome. Um, but, you know, as far as the job placement, we, we try to find what the person wants to do. Um, because, you know, we have some people, they want to grow. Right, they yeah, grow. right. And some people are, We want to have a store. Yeah, I want to, you know, like a CBD store. Well, you know the no, best... Oh, we, we, oh, gotcha. we want to have <laughs> the first marijuana store that come... It, it'll be yeah. a couple of years in, like, the medical dispensaries. We got time. They have to <laughs> prove that they can be open for two years without making any money. And the taxes and fees that are charged are, you know, millions. Mm, we're going to call it the man cave, too. You should, yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's one dispensary that didn't open because they, so there's three medical dispensaries. One isn't open because they bought their land, filled out all the paperwork, paid their taxes to Texas, millions of dollars, proved that they could be open for years without making any money, security, uh, packaging, uh, all the stuff that goes into it. For the state of Texas to say, oh, you're too close to a school. You wow. can't open your business. So, yeah, that's true. Right you have there, to have you, know? a, you have to have they the right zoning. Them. When it comes to marijuana, you right. have to have the right but zoning. But do you think that's Texas a, said, oh, my God, you poor things. Here, here's your money back. Go find another oh, place. Oh, no, 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 what we like to do is, you know, a lot of our students want to have their own business. And, you know, it takes a lot of money to start your own business, mm. right? But, mm. you know, everyone has their own little their own little tribe and their own little group of people that they know that, that need some help. You right. Know? Yeah, Patty yeah. sell weight loss coffee if you know anybody. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to post that. So, yeah. So, you know what we need to do? Put some CBD in it. I know, right? <laughs> Put some CBD you, in it. There right. you go. So, hey. We've had students come to our class because they own a chocolate business. And mm -hmm. this one woman, she came to our class. Edibles. And edibles. And she came to our class, and now she was recently previewed in D Magazine. Her business has just taken off. And, you know, it's delicious chocolates. We had some more ladies come to class who has a caramel business because they wanted to learn how to infuse it. So right. we taught them, you know, the class, but then we were able to introduce them to a manufacturing facility that we can say, hey, this is what you want to do. This right. is what you're looking for. You two are together now. So you that's not it. that's not an actual part of the school situation, the Joy Organics. That's a different... Joy, that's something we found because, you know, we, we, we tend to try and test a lot of they products. they got weed for dogs on there, too. Right, exactly. I was the like, CBD that's crazy. Trees for dogs. Yeah. <laughs> we, we CBD got, and for dogs. Damn. It's really yeah. good because I have one batshit crazy dog that I rescued and then this other dog. And you got separation anxiety? Well, the, she's just crazy. Like, she likes to bark, but when we give it to her, she'll just kind of like... I mean, she just kind of yeah, chills sure. and she smiles and there's her belly. And then the other one who's usually kind of lazy is up running around. And, you know, you, you see a difference in them, mm. you know. Okay. You know, CBD is good. It's all good for, for people, too. That's what's and up. And that's what, you know, we, we've, we've dealt with uh, people who deal with horses. And we're like, oh, you've got this great cream. Let's introduce you to this distributor, this manufacturer. You want to put CBD into it so you two are now connected. Now your product's going to boom and and you know take off because you have a cream specially for horses or dogs because you know people love their pets most definitely they will spend a bazillion dollars on their dog oh, yeah, if you, will. you know but that's no you have to be careful about what you're giving them because some treats are junk these treats you know the first the first thing is see is a cbd the first ingredient so that's always good see one of the things that kind of make me a little bit nervous about edibles especially like you don't know who put them together correct is how much are they putting inside of it because when I used to live in California, I tried an edible once, and I felt like I was a part of the couch. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you was eating them brownies, though. <laughs> I know I, mean, I was. Right, I, was like, right. I, was of, I, didn't, I mean, I enjoyed the feeling, but I, yes. I'm a get-up-and-go type of person. So yes. that didn't particularly work for me. But then I kind of realized, like, it depends on the amount of oils that they're putting in it or the Yeah, then you have to it. educate yourself on the different, you know, yeah. indica and sativa. Right. I was right. going to ask well, you the that. thing about the that, and well, the indica and sativa, if you, once you extract it and then put it into an edible, it doesn't matter if it's an indica or sativa, actually. Well, can you because explain that to me, Joe, though? I just want to know from, what is the <laughs> upper and what is the downer? The indica, the sativa, okay. like, so, what's the difference? So the indica, it would be the downer, and the sativa would be more of the upper. Okay. So, but now, I mean, it's all, it's hybrids and everything, and everything yes, else, yes. so. Think right, indica yeah. in the couch. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the couch, in the couch. Okay. Indica, all right. That makes couch. sense. That but, makes you sense. know, with the edibles, you do have to be careful because, you know, 
you have a Rice Krispie treat and it looks like a regular Rice Krispie treat, but it'll have instructions on it like eat yeah. a quarter yeah. of this. And some people will keep eating them because they don't immediately feel yep. it. Right. The edibles, it takes about mm, an hour to yeah. go about 45 minutes. Depending yeah. on your digestive right. hey, yeah. I went to Cali um, with my lady and man. This, we went and of course you know I had to go to Wonderland off Bucks you yeah. know so I go to Wonderland we got me a bottle I go back to Rome man we took I took two gummy bears little squares mm -hmm. just little squares like this the guy who was here last week though Sigma Pond shouts out to you uh, we were supposed to go see his concert because he was out there in LA, right? <laughs> no, notice the word supposed to right Man, I woke up at like three in the morning. <laughs> hey, look, it was like four in the afternoon. We yeah. both woke up like three in the morning. I'm like, what the fuck happened? I'm like, yo, maybe I was just jet lagged, man. Mm. I, it was crazy. Like those little things were strong, man. They yeah, that's like a, yeah. Too. You just have to. I, I guess it depends on like whoever's making the product mm -hmm. as well. I always feel like I'm a big dude though, so like you know, it hits at different levels though. I think it you does. know what I mean. Did I, you get the sublingual? Yeah. that goes the, you know just like. 15 minutes and it goes straight into your system but when you eat an edible it has to go through your whole body, whole body. system and then you know it, it's just it's just in there and it, then it lasts for like six hours the surprise <laughs> how do you feel about the vape pens and with the cbd oil in it are you a fan of those you or? know i i know people love them and they really appreciate them but i'm still a fan of you know uh Man, still fart it with it too much for my taste. Yeah, uh, right. you know. So I, I mean, but I, I do appreciate them. We work with the Joy is a great product, but one of the other people that we work with is a doctor in Vegas, and he's doing actual formulations for us, uh, okay. pain creams that are epic. You just rub it on, and, nice. and I mean, it's ridiculous. The pain just goes away. Very uh, the the CBD, it's it's amazing. But we went and visited him once, and he <laughs> he didn't infuse the starburst he just brushed straight thc on these starbursts and you know i'm like i can handle it and i ate one and like <laughs> 15 minutes later it's like you would be talking but your lips would be moving that's like, the most snoop dog right there yeah. he must have just sprinkled <laughs> some moon rock on that joint Ooh. okay well you also say you have a, a lot of industry networking which i could definitely see from your personality that networking wouldn't be a problem but uh coming into the industry especially being in a state that it is not legal like what kind of things can we all do to kind of help move the meter man call your representatives that is the <laughs> easiest thing you can do they have to take your phone call if not them then their assistant and whatever you say has to be transcribed if you send them an email it has to be given to them in a, in a stack and they have to go through it i mean sometimes they won't always talk to you but they have to see what you're saying and it is so important for um yeah talk talk to your representatives because that's what that's what's gonna you know there are some stubborn ass people who you know just refuse to leave office <laughs> and Especially, especially down here in Texas, because uh -huh, exactly. people are voting in the local election. Yeah, it's, that's, that's another thing too. Is like that. I think that. I mean, that that has to be more of an agenda too, right? Yes. We talk about be. voting. Yes. You know, and if you get pulled over by the police, you know, what I'm saying they ask you like, "How how are you?" You know, it's no officer. Hi, how are you? Hi, you, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last so, yeah, representatives, get the word out there. And if you do happen to go see your representative, you know. You know, like we were talking about earlier, you can't wear a tutu with your hair and pigtails, right. smoking a doobie, being like, up yours, man. You can't, you can't be do that. Tactful. You have to. Be tactful. You have to. Yeah, be tactful. Your doors are open to doctors and lawyers because yes. you say that that's usually your yes. target. Well, because, you know, there are some doctors. The endocannabinoid system was really only discovered, I think, in the late 80s. And so there are doctors who don't know anything about it. You can right. ask them and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, it's. It's pretty important, you know, especially when I talk to people like other amputees and, you know, they've taken the Gabatin and they've taken this and they've taken the opioids and they just can't do it anymore. And it's mm -hmm. like, do yeah, this because it works. Yeah, because uh, I'm a veteran, you know what I mean? So, and I also have PTSD. So I know like at one point in time when I would go see my, my psychologist, she would try to prescribe me with all these different okay. types of medication. And I'm the type of person, I don't like to take all these different types right. of medication. So... I would self-medicate myself with marijuana and it kind of cleared all of 
whatever issues that I it was did. having at, at and some point in time. And thank you for that. Yeah. And CBD is also, that's another reason we're into this. There are too many veterans dying needlessly mm. because they don't have anywhere to turn to or they have seizures that mm. are so bad or the flashbacks. And this is also a great way for people like veterans to come back into society and, and you know, maybe help at a hemp farm or eventually be a driver or security. I mean, yeah. shit, that's perfect. Yeah. Security well, at a farm or a dispensary. So CBD is legal here. CB, mm, that's still kind of a... Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, that's what but, I, you know, I want to know. You've seen there's tons of stores Yeah, there's around. actually a I store mean, right down the street. Because, right. you know, yeah. uh, a couple so, months big ago... Big storefront. So yeah. what, <laughs> what is the mixed message we're getting? It's Whether a very it's mixed message. it's legal or not or... You know, so Dallas, is it like county lines or is it I mean, county think lines? about Dallas County, John Cruzeau, I'm that man. You right. get caught, don't, don't bring me anything less than two ounces. I ain't even going to look at it. Don't waste my time. Yes. Perfect. Meanwhile, in Tarrant County around the same time, she sent softened up. But the DA here was like, but that's I'll flowered. put you in jail forever for CBD oil. And I'm oh. like, what the hell is yeah, wrong with yeah. this? This is... This but is it's wrong. We're, so, we're coming upon a time of a paradigm shift as well, yes. where the old way of thinking is kind of kind of going out the way. Right yes. now. you know what I mean. Right. So we're we're not we're like on that little edge right mm-hmm. now. You know what I mean. So maybe twenty years from now, like our children or something, will be talking about like yes. what? Like you guys have to go through exactly. that. Like, it's, it's, like we're, they should we're at be learning phase. about yeah. the endocannabinoid system and you know and how it works because yeah, you know our children shouldn't be scared of this plant. Yeah, it, that's basically what it boils down to. It's actually a plant. It know? is a plant. And it's so, medicine. Yeah, yeah. So if I come to your school and I sign up today and uh, I start to go into classes, what could my future look like in, let's say, a year? Let's say in a year. Um, we've had people open up their own CBD shops in Fort Worth, hook them up with the manufacturers and the distributors, help them get their shops going, uh, provide that's awesome. tech support. Um you know, kids, we have a, a current family in our class, and one of the, the, the son is 16. Mm-hmm. And so we're trying to hook him up with an internship at one of the farms that, you know, I was discussing earlier. Or he's actually also looking at the CBD so manufacturing facility. So out of state facility. or here? The, there's, the farms. There's farms here, yeah. Okay, yeah. and there's farms out yeah, of state, farms too. You guys have relationships with them? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, but the hemp farming is what's going to be legal in the forefront right now. I mean, you can... The hemp farming and then they extract the oils. Yes, they extract the oils because you know, right. right now, you know, someone with some land could start you know hemp farming. Then they could build like a little shed and charge people to store their hemp and then make their own little manufacturing or extraction so can I grow facility. Some, can I grow some weed in my closet at home? Is that all right? You, you can do whatever do. you want. <laughs> you, can do whatever. you can do whatever you want. His address whatever. is. <laughs> hey, Takashi. You know what I'm saying? Is that like, yeah. Just up, down, tomato, potatoes. <laughs> no, this is nothing. Okay, okay. I was just asking, man. Yeah, so when you when you say the the hemp farming, are we talking about the actual cannabis plant in a particular part of the plant? We are talking strictly about hemp, not the uh, with the low with the low so to non existent THC and high CBD. Of plant it's, it's just hemp. Now, when yeah. you get into the cannabis. That's where you get all the strains What's the and the THC. Uh, CBD is, uh, I mean, uh, hemp yep. is high CBD qual- quantity, very low if any THC. Mm. The the uh, cannabis, cannabis, the marijuana is, is very we, high THC. It's what got the THC. That's and, what you we know, go to the corner and get. That psycho, uh, you know, psychoactive effect. CBD, if you ever get too high on THC, if you take CBD, it can bring it down. Bring you down and balance you, you know, out. and I think that like the the way that the wave is going down with the whole veganism movement and everything mm-hmm. like that, they are really into hemp. I know in California, like hemp clothing is like a yeah. huge thing. It's holistic. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. So I kind of see kind of uh, Dallas moving more in that direction as well. I hope you know? so. Hemp is like you know it's been around for that. It's been documented ten thousand years ago. They Jewelry, found, like yeah. everything. Yeah, 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 they found hemp clothing. seeds and like mummies' yeah. teeth that's mm-hmm. made cells. You know, yeah. and they did use it for medicine and you know rituals. Yeah, most well, definitely. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, why don't you do this now? I'll give you the opportunity to drop your phone number at your industry and your website, or you want me to drop it. Uh, I'll let you go ahead. You got the you voice. Sure? Yeah. All right. Well, if you want to get in touch with the DFW Academy of Science, I'm sorry, Academy of Cannabis Science, 
You can call them at 817-202-4838. I'm at this phone with me I, all the time. Yeah, I, I was just about to say that will lead directly to this lady. I've been on the phone with her all week, so I know. Uh, also, their email is going to be class at dfwacs.com. No, but you can all dot co not okay dot co okay all right so let's say that again this is the email address for them it's class at dfwacs dot co uh, but you can also find all of this information and more on their program at www.dfwacademyofcannabisscience.com. dot dot com once again www.dfwacademyofcannabisscience.com anybody if you'd like to donate to the man cave we could definitely <laughs> use it we have a cash app now it's going to be cash emblem uh cash emblem the man cave all lowercase letters uh feel free to please uh support us in any way possible we appreciate it you know what i'm saying right miss billy that's right that's Dang, right. Dang, that's what's up. That's what's up. Thanks, fellas. Yeah, this is awesome, man. You Appreciate know, you. I mean, we ain't, we ain't done yet. We still I'm got still about five it. more oh, minutes. Really? So, right. you know what I'm saying? I, I wanted you to talk about what happened over in, uh, you were telling me about earlier. Rolling Loud? Yeah. Man, you know what? Like, honestly, this stuff is kind of getting out of hand. Like, with this, uh, the gun violence, you know? Uh, I guess if something broke out between two artists, a young artist, NBA Young Boy and T Grizzly, you know, between their two crews. But, Anyways, there was a shootout that was happening. And honestly, I like to go to concerts. I'm a big music head, you know what I mean? So it's, I don't want to be at a concert or take my nephew to a concert and have to worry about the place getting shot up. But unfortunately, like when these type of things happen, it's not the person that is in the beef that normally gets touched. Usually it's somebody right. else that's outside of that. In this situation, like I think a five-year-old was injured by a straight bullet and a man that was sitting in his car that was uh, that was killed in, by a straight bullet. You know what I mean? So I just want to uh, just remind you guys, you know, uh, gun safety and just kind of like talk it out. Like it's not really yeah, that be serious. Man, like, be a man about yours, man. And stop being old hoes out here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you know really like I promise really? you, the next day you'll probably totally forget about it. You know right. what I mean? So it's not as seriously as it as it comes and if you guys are online and you're looking at those type of things and thinking this is how what I have to be when I go out there, you really don't have to be that way. You know what I mean? Just kind of just go and enjoy the concert and have fun with your friends, but don't have to worry about beefing and getting shot up and everything like that. It's yeah. too much violence. Going I think on. Kodak Black got arrested this week. Yeah, all this stuff is just it's ridiculous, like man. It you know really what I mean? Is, and yeah. so like the the whole name of the concert is rolling loud. You know what I mean? So it's like you're really supposed to go out there, smoke, listen to music and have a good time with your right. friends. You know what I mean? But you don't want to get in any type of altercation <laughs> out there like that. So I just want to remind you guys to keep the peace, you know what I'm saying? And one love, man. One love to everything. Yes, How man. about you, Joe? You got any closing remarks, my brother? Yeah, so I'm I'm just still trying to Determine. <laughs> so if I'm looking at a plant, right? <laughs> He's how do I determine the right difference now. from a, from a hemp plant and a cannabis plant? Well, the, because it looks like the hemp plants don't actually have a cola. Exactly. So they don't. They, they don't, don't bud, hemp right? Hemp plants are right. strong and straight up. So it's almost like up. a bamboo shoot, but the Basically, leaves yes. are weed. Yes. Well, okay. well, you know, it's the bamboo shoot, and it has like a little bit of foliage, but you know, gotcha. the, the cannabis is like big and fluffy, mm -hmm. and right, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can so. tell within like two to three weeks if it's a male or female plant. Gotcha. So. so, is the male the hemp? Is that basically what it is? Male is hemp, and female is cannabis. No, 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 no. Because there's male and female both. Just like with the cannabis plant, the one you want to smoke is the female. Mm -hmm. The right. male does what males do, and you know yeah. does its but thing. That's but. The, it, but that's what I'm saying. Is that called hemp? No. Okay. So what I'm looking at is two completely different yes. plants. They hemp just, and cannabis are like cousins, right? Oh, okay. or sisters, but not twins. I never knew right. that. Yeah. yeah so that's so that's yeah. what was kind of thrown. I was like, yes. I gotta look at an actual hemp plant. So okay. Yeah. So the leaves are very similar to a cannabis plant, like what we all know. The chronic leaf is yes. similar to that. But there's no, it's no there's bugs. no flower, yeah. There's no cola, so yeah. there's yeah. Right. So that's where a lot of the confusion with hemp being legalized, yeah. and, you know, the hemp bill being pushed through, but two totally different animals. You know, the cannabis, the devil's lettuce, of course, has the high THC, which people don't want to get involved with, and you know, the CBD hemp. Because even if you're growing hemp, you have to test your crops occasionally to make sure they don't go over 0.3 percent or THC because right. When you cut them down and then you decarboxylate them, it's yeah, gonna yeah. 
elevate that THC level and then your crop could be useless or pointless if it has too much THC in it in Texas mm -hmm. right now. Okay, so anybody that comes to the school with uh, the man cave as a reference. Exactly. Uh, they, they, get a, they get a small 1% discount. <laughs> they do. If they call and reference you all, Go I'll for it. definitely look Yo, appreciate you coming out here educating us, man. You know what this is? This is like really interesting. Oh, really interesting. I love this. Yeah. I love yeah, to go anytime definitely. and talk. I'll bring, I'll bring slides. I'll bring some like figures. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely into the, the science behind yeah. it. That's, that's what got me into yeah. it. Like just watching videos yeah. and watching yes. how they de decarboxylate. Yeah. You know, and how they extract it. So that's kind of what. So steam or uh, the other one, what's the best extraction? Steam or what is it called? Uh, there's the butane. One? There's like CO2. There's. Yeah. Uh, you can even do simple extraction with like Everclear. With Ever yeah, with Everclear. Yeah. Oh, okay. You do it with Everclear. Well, man, okay, we could have went much longer, y'all, <laughs> but it's cool. We out of here. It's the man cave. Thank y'all for partying with us, man.